One of the biggest wastes of time in 3D is trying to do a claw simulation to get a still render because you're trying to wait for simulation to get the shape that you want. So let's just do it by hand like an artist would. With that out of the way, let's start in ZBrush. So in ZBrush, I know it's very scary for artists getting started and I will confess, I'm still a beginner, but it's worth knowing a couple things for 3D art. If you left click on the outside of your mesh in ZBrush, you can rotate around. If you hold Alt and right click, you can pan around. And if you hold Control and right click, you can zoom back and forth. Now our subtool panel on the right hand side here is gonna give us all of our 3D objects in our scene. I just have a plane here, and if you don't know how to add that, you can go to Insert and add a 3D plane. And depending on the project that you open up for ZBrush in the very first time, you might need to click on this button up here, which is going to open up different subtools. But I'm going to go back to my plane subtool over here, and I have my plane object. First thing we want to do is I want to make this a little bit thinner to create some ribbons. So I'm going to hit W on the keyboard to open up my gizmo and squash this down and make it just a little bit taller. Now to get a really decent cloth simulation out of ZBrush very easily, I do recommend getting everything into equally spaced quads. So we're going to scroll down in our panel, our tool panel over here and find geometry. And under the geometry tab, we're going to make sure that we Z remesh this. We can just go ahead and Z remesh and it's going to make it smaller. About 500 polygons should be enough. We don't want this to be too many points or too many polygons because it'll take longer to simulate and add some of the cloth effects. And honestly, a lot of the shape that we want comes from the primary form, not a bunch of little folds and stuff. All that being said, I like this ribbon. And if I hold left click and navigate around, we can see that as we turn around to the backside, we don't see anything. The reason why is that ZBrush only shows us the front face of a polygon. So let's scroll all the way down in our tool panel and we are gonna find our display properties and we're gonna hit double. So when we now have this, we can see the double tab is showing us polygon faces from both sides. So now I'm gonna show you one of my favorite tools for creating this cool looking cloth effect, and that is the array mesh tool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit W on the keyboard, and I'm gonna rotate this 90 degrees, and I can hold shift to lock it to increments of five. I'm gonna hold alt on my keyboard and hit the reset button right here. And what that's gonna do is basically reset the axis point of the gizmo, so the default rotation is uh, at its own world center. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and hit the array mesh button. And we're looking at the front of the mesh right now and because it's a very thin plane, we actually don't see anything. We're gonna fix that in a second, but to help visualize this, let's rotate around just a little bit and I'm gonna add 10 repetitions. But before I do that, I'm gonna make sure I click on lock position and transpose. So with this here, let's set the repetition to like eight and set the X to some amount. Just push it out just a little bit. Awesome, looks good. That's enough spacing for me. Maybe I'll make it just a little thinner. Awesome. Now the next thing we need to do is we need to bake this down. So I do recommend saving your project at this point. I'm just gonna go ahead and hit make mesh. And the reason why we do that is now we can get these ribbons to interact with one another when we use our cloth brushes. So now we can actually start doing the artistry part. So we can hit B on the keyboard and that's gonna bring up our brush panel. This brush panel gives us all the stuff in ZBrush. You don't need to know every single one, but for the cloth stuff, you hit B to bring up the brush panel and then you hit C to only show the brushes that are typically starting with the, the C letter. Uh, it's because it's all in alphabetical order. And there's so many different cloth brushes that you can use. So I always like using the cloth twister for this kind of effect. But depending on your render, you might need to make something to your style. So with this, I'll just use the cloth twister right here. If I hit the space bar button, that's going to bring up this little menu and I can increase and de decrease my brush size here and increase the intensity and decrease the intensity. By default, the intensity of some of these brushes will be pretty high. You don't need a tablet, but it will get really intense if you're just using a mouse. So I'll set my Z intensity to let's say like four. And then if I click left click into my mesh, I can create this cool looking cloth effect without a lot of work and it's simulating super fast. And I can really just brush this in. So I'm not gonna make this 
as super fine tuned as I need to because I want to create a nice tutorial for you. So let's just say this is what I wanted. This is the shape that I want to render out for whatever I'm trying to make. Next thing that I'll do is I'll go into my dynamics tab here. I'm going to dock this window by hitting this little turn on icon. It's going to appear on the left hand side. So there's a couple things that I've already changed in this project file. I did increase my simulation iterations. By default, it is 100. So I'll just bring this up to like 200 something. I make sure that I turn on self collision. And that's important because we want to make sure that none of this planes here are colliding with one another. So it's important to make sure that we have our self collision on. And then I set the gravity to 0.1. We don't want it to fall too fast, but just enough so that uh, the polygons have somewhere to go. So all that being said with the gravity, away from the default, the default is 10, let's set it to 0.1, we can hit run simulation, it's going to push everything out just a little bit. And then from here, we can hit W on the keyboard. If I hold alt and hit the little pin button right here, it's going to center my gizmo around the geometry center of our object. And then if I hit the home button, it's going to bring the entire mesh to the very center of the ZBrush world space. So all that being said, we have an object. Depending on what you're trying to make, you may need to bake this geometry down, such as if you're going into Unreal Engine, you will need to add thickness to this. To do that, you're going to hit D on the keyboard. And if you go into your geometry tab on the right hand side, you're going to find the dynamic subdivision panel. And this is like a fake subdivision. It's adding more geometry without actually adding geometry to our mesh. And it's like a preview of a subdivided model. But with the dynamic subdivision, we have this thickness modifier right here. We can go ahead and increase this value a little bit, and it's going to add thickness to our cloth. Definitely a little bit too much there. Let's bring it down. And sure, that's fine for me. If I wanted to bring this into something like Unreal Engine, you will need to do this because there are no thickness modifiers in Unreal. But if you're using something like Cinema 4D or Blender, you do have modifiers or generators to add thickness to your mesh. So I'm perfectly good with this, which means I'm not going to use the dynamic subdivision tool. Instead, I'm going to hit Control D on my keyboard. And the Control D button is going to add a true subdivision. It's going to add points to our mesh. 17,000 points is perfectly fine for what I'm looking for for this tutorial. So I'm going to go ahead and hit Delete Lower. We can see that this slider is showing us how many subdivisions visions that we have. Let's go ahead and delete it. We don't need the lower one. And from here, we can now get our stuff into our preferred 3D software. I'm going to go ahead and hide this window on the left hand side. And I am going to first go up to my preferences tab. Under preferences, we have the Go Z button right here. Go Z is a bridge between different 3D softwares. My preferred here is Cinema 4D, but you could use Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, whatever you prefer to use. I want to make sure that my Cinema 4D path is set, saved there on my computer, and all that is good to go. Last thing that we need to double check is we hit the R button right here, and this is going to let us choose what software we're going to send our GoZ file into. So I have Cinema 4D selected here. I'm going to hit cancel and all that is good to go. It's also important to have Cinema 4D open. So I'm going to pull it up on my other monitor. And this is the thumbnail that I created for this video. I'm going to go ahead and delete this mesh. And if you don't have the GoZ plugin enabled in Cinema 4D, you can go up to extensions, GoZ brush and GoZ install. I already installed it. So you don't need to worry about that. So with this here, we can go ahead and hit the Go Z button with our selected subtool, and it will bring over our selected subtool. You could also select all of your subtools by hitting the All button or Visible if you have multiple objects in your scene. I'll just hit the Go Z button right here, and after a second, hey, look, it's in Cinema 4D. And now what I can do is I can select my mesh, I can hit T on the keyboard and scale it down, and then I can go into my Properties tab and just bring it to a spot that I like, which is going to be right there, sure. Now, my favorite modifiers or generators to help add thickness and subdivision to this are the Thicken and Subdivision Surface in Cinema. There are other tools and other 3D packages that will do basically the same thing. So let's add some thickness. I already have a generator down here that is creating my thickness. So I'm just going to go ahead and drop it in here for the sake of this tutorial. And I'll set the object thickness to like 0.1. 
0.1. And then what I'm going to do is take this thickened object and put it under a subdivision surface. So now it's going to smooth it out just a little bit. So I have my scene here. I already have some lights pre-built. And the last thing that's worth addressing is materials. So from ZBrush, if you do any painting in ZBrush, you can bring over your poly paint information into Cinema 4D or whatever 3D package you're using if you're using the GoZ tool set. But uh, I did make my own material for this just for this tutorial because I think having some glass Microsoft Windows style desktop backgrounds is cool. So I have this material here where I went in and added a lot of roughness. It's about 0.5 and I scrolled down, added some transmission which is going to make it look more like glass and I added some subdivision surface. I'm just saying a lot of words but why don't we go ahead and take a look at what this looks like. I'll go to my redshift option, redshift render view and I'm going to dock it right here. Here's the preview of the thumbnail that you saw and if I hit the play button we can see what this render looks like and hey that looks pretty cool. And we can go ahead and add even more thickness if we needed to. Eight centimeters is way too much, let's say 0.4. And now we're gonna get a cool effect like that. And we could very well just rotate this mesh and get a really cool looking effect with some cloth without any simulation that's taking a lot of render power. Now, the reason why I do really like this functionality of blending a base shape that you would create in ZBrush and then using simulation tools on top of it is you're not starting with a blank slate, a flat plane. So now what I could do is right click on this, go to my simulation tag and cloth, and I already have a couple simulation forces inside my scene from this menu. I brought in some turbulence and some rotation. And if I go ahead and make sure my Redshift IPR is not showing or not playing, if I save my project because it's always good to uh, save early and save often. And we are just going to hit the play button and it should start simulating our stuff and we're getting this cool looking rotation. It's adding some turbulence and it should not be intersecting because it's a true real simulation that's a little bit more VFXy. So letting this go for another second, I can hit the escape key to stop the playback. I can hit the play button of my Redshift IPR and now I have an even cooler effect that I did my base sculpt in ZBrush and then brought it into Cinema 4D. And uh, yeah, I like doing this for quick little dailies, quick little exercises. Hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did learn something from it, let me know in the comment section down below. Questions, comments, concerns, whatever else. Comment section is down there for that as well. And I will leave you with the final tip and that is to eat one gram of protein per pound of body weight in your mix. Goodbye, my friends. Bye.